We have all been waiting, but AMD is finally here with the latest inline Radeon graphics powered by RDNA 3. And honestly, wow, we're just really looking forward towards the future right now. The all new Radeon RX 7900 XDX and the Radeon RX 7900 XD tackles 8K gaming with much improved performance, improved ray tracing performance, includes support for DisplayPort 2.1, AV1 encode and decode, and it all starts at the price of just about 899 US dollars. So let's just get right into the heart of things and see what AMD really has to offer and go through every aspect and feature that they are bringing to the competition. And to kind of give you an insight as to whether or not this might be the generation for you to jump onto. So with that said, let's get into it. RDNA has come a long way and it's now in its third iteration, aptly named RDNA 3 and AMD had some really ambitious goals to achieve. To be the leader in performance per watt, to raise the bar for high resolution, high frame rate gaming and to usher in the next gen gaming experience. Well, did they hit all three targets? After what we've just seen, we really do think so. Now first up, let's talk about the two cards that are being introduced. We have the Radeon RX 7900 XDX as well as the Radeon RX 7900 XT. For those of you who have been following the graphics industry for a long time, you might find the XDX nomenclature familiar from the ATI days. Well, AMD is bringing that back and as it should be, it belongs to the flagship product with good reason. The 7900 XDX is the world's first chiplet gaming CPU which pairs a 5nm graphics compute die at 300mm square as well as a 6nm memory cache die with 6 of those at 37mm squares each. This allows it to achieve 61 teraflops and a whopping 58 billion transistors. Now we aren't going to delve too much into the details because there is quite a lot but just know that by going with this design is what allowed AMD to achieve both their performance and power targets. With the 7900 XDX, we are looking at 96 compute units, a 2.3 GHz game clock, 24 gigs of GDDR6 memory running at 384-bit, support for DisplayPort 2.1, AV1 encode and decode, and perhaps the best part of all, a total board power of just 355 watts. In fact, if most adding board partners are going to follow in the footsteps of what AMD has done with their reference design for the card itself, we are looking at a really reasonable 2.5 slot thickness alongside the standard two 8-pin power connectors. Now, whether or not this new card design is going to do well thermally, that remains to be seen. But as of right now, and just based off what we managed to get our hands on briefly, it's looking pretty promising. Talking about performance itself, AMD hasn't really shared much specific numbers except for a few select scenarios but let's take a look at a couple. With the 7900 XDX and gaming at 1440p, you'll be able to max out Apex Legends and actually hit a frame rate cap of 300 frames per second. The same thing applies for Overwatch 2, you'll be able to hit a max frame rate of 600 frames per second and for Valorant, an easy 833 frames per second. On the other end of the spectrum, you'll be able to expect nearly 100 frames per second on Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 8K resolution with FSR. Those are pretty insane numbers, but what makes it more amazing is the fact that in due time, you will actually get to physically experience those high frame rates or 8K gaming thanks to DisplayPort 2.1. For those of you who aren't up to speed, well, DisplayPort 2.1 supports 1440p up to 900Hz, 4K up to 480Hz and 8K up to 165Hz. In general, AMD is touting up to 1.7 times native 4K performance uplift and up to 1.5 times native 4K gaming with ray tracing uplift against the previous RX 6950 XT. Insane numbers, but it's real and it's coming. With regards to the 7900 XT, AMD hasn't really shown any clear performance metrics as most of it was focused on the flagship 7900 XDX but they did at least share the specifications. We are looking at 84 compute units, a 2GHz game clock, 20GB of GDDR6 memory running at 320-bit, the same support for DisplayPort 2.1 and AV1 encode and decode, and all of that with a slightly lower total board power of 300 watts. Similarly, a standard 2.5 slots design as well as the standard two 8-pin power connectors. 
We really can't say much for now, but just looking at the specs alone, we don't expect performance to be that far off from the 7900 XTX. But all that aside, this is what everyone probably wants to hear. And if you've already watched the live stream, you would already know. Both the RX 7900 XDX as well as the RX 7900 XT will be available for purchase come 30th December. The 7900 XDX will go for 999 US dollars, while the 7900 XT will go for 899 US dollars. Needless to say, this is just amazing, especially against the competition. Now, AMD did specifically state that they wanted to target the magical $1,000 mark, and thus some distinct decisions were made such as going with GDDR6 instead of 6X, PCI 4.0 instead of 5.0, and much more. Now, will those decisions bite them in the back in the long run? Well, honestly, probably not. We would rather take AV1 encode and decode as well as DisplayPort 2.1 any time of the day as compared to getting GDDR6X. We strongly feel that AMD has made the right decision here. But nevertheless, the prices are as such, and just based on pricing alone, it's a W for AMD for sure. Now, there are also many other things that AMD announced and showed briefly. Things such as AMD HyperRx, which is a one-click solution via software to enable faster frame rates and lower latency in games, as well as things like AMD Advantage for desktops, where AMD will work closely with OEMs and SIs to really make full use of their new products by pairing the Ryzen 7000 series and Radeon RX 7000 series alongside all the other components for a cohesive experience much like their laptop offerings. But we won't dive too deep for now. Well, at the moment, all you really need to know is that both the RX 7900 XTX and the RX 7900 XT is looking to be really promising in terms of performance, but not only just that, brings you support for DisplayPort 2.1 for future proofing per se, as well as AV1 encode and decode, which is going to be great for all you streamers out there. And even though the price is kind of expensive still at 899 and 999 US dollars respectively, it's still much more palatable compared to the competition out there. So it's within reason, we would say. Now, of course, we do definitely still have to wait till we get our hands on the physical card itself and put it through its paces to see what it's really capable of. But right now, well, going just by the numbers and what AMD has kind of showed us from demos and whatnot, it's looking to be really promising. And again, you're getting key features that the competition isn't really offering at this point in time. Honestly, we are just really glad that AMD is pushing the limit and more competition is always welcome. And on a personal note, well, I do actually quite like the design of the new cards. It's pretty cool. If that's it, well, definitely do stay put until we get our hands on the actual card itself, till we do the full review. So to then, definitely do hold off on making that next generation purchase just yet. So definitely do like this video, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on all our social channels such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Till the next one. See ya.